starting off with the miso soup, I'm adding in about two, maybe to three cups of water, depending on how much your bowl can hold. And I cubed up about a quarter of an extra firm tofu brick and added it to my water with about a cup of spinach. And I'm gonna let that simmer. And meanwhile, I'm going to cook some of my hash browns. So adding in as much of these hash browns as I can with a little bit of veggie broth to let simmer for a little bit and adding in my kale as well. And this is gonna steam until the kale and potatoes are nice and tender. And once the miso soup has gotten hot enough to cook down the spinach, I'm gonna add it to my bowl. And lastly, a tablespoon of miso, stirring that in until it's fully melted. And you have warm miso soup as part of the first meal. And the other half to this meal is my kale and potato hash that I'm gonna add to my bowl and then just top this off with some coconut aminos and that should be all that's needed for this delicious simple meal. For the second meal, I'm taking two already pre-steamed Murasaki potatoes. It just has purple skin on the outside and this um, russet potato kind of colored flesh on the inside. It's actually most similar to a russet potato, but it does have some sweetness to it. So I'm just taking the steamed potato and chomping it into chunks. And I pre-steamed all these potatoes in my Instant Pot, which is my preferred method. Just throw as many potatoes as I can in my Instant Pot and with a little bit of water and then cook them between like 12 and 15 minutes, depending on the size of them. And they turn out perfectly every time. Using several leaves from a romaine head of lettuce, I went ahead and took them apart and washed them, and now I'm gonna be adding in the chopped up Murasaki potatoes. Adding in one of my favorite seasonings, the Everything Bagel seasoning, and just topping them off on the top. The Murasaki potatoes are moist enough that the seasoning just sticks right to it, so there's no mixing needed or anything like that. And then the topping of everything is gonna be the Dijon mustard. One of my favorite condiments now, it adds a nice tanginess to it and it's nice because you have the sweetness of the potato, the saltiness from the seasoning, and then the tanginess from the mustard. This makes for a very satisfying, sweet and salty kind of meal. For the buffalo bake, I'm gonna be adding in two cups of veggie broth to my pan and setting that at a higher temperature so it comes to a nice boil. Also adding in a quarter of a cup of nutritional yeast, one teaspoon of onion powder, and half of a cup of hot sauce. Now if you prefer things a little bit more mild, definitely cut that measurement in half so only do about a quarter of a cup of hot sauce because it gets a little spicy. And in the meantime, while that's cooking up, I'm gonna be chopping uh, half of my cauliflower head and only using about half of the head anyways, cutting each of those little florets into bite-sized pieces that will add to my baking pan. Also chopping two celery stalks into bite-sized pieces as well. Using a nine by 13 glass baking dish, I'm just sprinkling in my veggies so that they're evenly dispersed onto my baking dish. I preheated my oven already to 400 degrees and I've gone ahead and washed and rinsed two cans of garbanzo beans, adding them also to my baking dish. Incorporating a cup of brown rice, evenly sprinkling this over top of my veggie and garbanzo bean mix. 
I save the brown rice for last too. When you add the liquid, the hot liquid to it, it just helps kind of distribute the liquid versus brown rice ratio just a little bit more evenly than if it was on the bottom. So adding in the hot liquid that's been simmering on the stove, I'm sprinkling this also on top, pouring it evenly over the mixture, and then I'll just end up kind of stirring it together to make sure that there's no dry brown rice pieces that are exposed. Covering this dish with some parchment paper and then topping that also with some aluminum foil. This will allow the heat to not escape so that everything can cook more thoroughly. And then I'll be baking this in the oven at 400 degrees for about an hour. Serving this on a plate with some celery sticks and then also a really simple side salad I just threw together with some spinach and arugula with sliced tomatoes, cucumbers, and some balsamic. I'm also going to put in a recipe for vegan ranch dressing I ended up using later on because it's a little too spicy. Mm -hmm. 